Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Andrew Selby. Appreciate the uh, information. Lots of good information. Lots of good stories. Uh, some exciting things. Obviously, some challenges still that uh, you guys are facing. And appreciate the leadership of the council um, and, and the great work of the staff to, to help continue to provide the services for the residents in Auburn. Um, we're going to move to the county presentation. And uh, to begin that, I'd like to introduce uh, someone who's uh, one of my many bosses, uh, who sits on the board of, of CETA, but also has done a tireless job as chairman of the legislature uh, for the last uh, few years in bringing um, really just a, a desire and, and a, a wish to see good projects move forward, to see collaborations happen. Um, you know, I can't say it any better than, than Mayor Quill said it uh, in acknowledging the work that he's done. Um, but, but honestly, uh, Chairman Chapman, we, we are in good places right now because of the things that you've done as chairman. And I welcome you to the podium to hear about the county. Thanks to everybody for their kind words. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'll miss it. Uh, but I'm going to go have some, some more fun. So I want to say welcome to everyone. Thank you for this honor and the privilege. Many thanks to our colleagues from the legislature and the city council and all the elected employees, and all the elected officials. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with you through 2014 and jumpstart 2015. Your input, your knowledge, your perseverance make for a great team. I also want to say thanks to our planning department. I want to say especially uh, Steve Lynch and Nicholas for putting the slides together for me. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's beyond what I uh, had expected. I talked before about teamwork. I spoke about the importance of having teamwork as a foundation for great success. And that remains a constant in our society. So what does our team here in Cougar County need to maintain us as a destination? as a place where people will want to raise families, maintain their businesses, and bring new businesses. And I know nobody wants to hear about potholes, but we do have potholes and puddles. So our infrastructure needs some attention. Just like most other counties in the state, Mother Nature has truly tested our metal this winter, tested our roads. But in order to promote the area, in order to receive supplies, in order to receive our basic needs, enhanced tourism, the desire to run a business here, the desire to provide for development, we're going to have to use more funds, more for repairs, more for paving. We're going to have to be creative and utilize different methods to find a better efficiency. I think if we all take a trip someplace, one of the things we remember is our ride there and our ride back. I know I've had several telephone calls about uh, conditions of roads, but uh, Believe it or not, some folks have actually thought it was a great ride in from another area, from another part of our state, into the Finger Lakes region, and back out again. Also, this coming year, we're going to ask for additional collaboration on various services and projects with our towns, our villages, the city of Auburn. We're going to be again looking to enhance our agreements for the plowing, maybe take on the mowing, perhaps some road work, we're going to have to share in grant applications. One of the success stories is, uh, and I compliment Jim Orman and his staff, is they started collecting taxes in the town of Springport this past year, and that service may expand. We worked previously on broadband with towns in the southern part of the county. We're going to look for other opportunities to cover the entire county. The governor has a program that he's introduced, and we're going to follow up on that. We've seen the fruits of collaboration. But we must continue. We have to continue for services to remain and improve. We're going to continue to work with our other partners, our other counties and organizations. We're going to make more noise on the mandate issue. We've seen some relief in Medicaid. But as I was commenting to Dan Fezzen before we got started today, in seven and a half years on this legislature, in seven and a half years of making trips to Albany, we have talked about the same things asking for mandate relief, and it hasn't arrived. We cannot be satisfied to remain at the status quo. Let's talk a little bit more about the state level and effects on our budgets. We've got this 2% tax cap. Well, 
It's a great goal, it's a great guide, but it's not one that all counties can embrace instantly. Just for example, last year Madison County raised their taxes by 12%. Wyoming County to our west, 8%. And there's a whole host of others that had to exceed the tax cap, more severely than we did here in Hugo. Tax dollars need to stay here or they need to come back here. A little bit about budgets. This is not a fun topic <laughs> until we say yes, but we're going to again initiate the process very shortly. We're looking for changes that can be made to continue the services without a burdensome tax rate. We all know that hindsight is perfect, and we know from that view we can keep rates low year after year, but then you're going to experience that catch-up with a remarkable increase. Our course should be one that is measured, and that it's going to take time. Clarity in the process is absolutely necessary for everyone to understand and to remove any doubts about what we're doing. We need thoughtful and committed planning. I also want to mention that a few years back in 2003-2004, for example, Cuba County had to raise taxes by 16.5% and a little over 20%. And if you look at the previous years leading up to that change, all the tax levies were very, very low. So there's the catch-up that I mentioned. Last year, we used money from our fund balance. We raised the tax levy above the 2%. We did that, and, and in doing that, we learned in the process that only 1% raise in the tax levy equated to $370,000. So when we did the 2.9%, with all the funny math that Albany provides you, we raised, we raised approximately $1 million. Well, when we have a $140 million budget, and, and we can actually tweak $39 million out of it, uh, that's not giving us a lot of money to play with. So attention is needed in the year of mandates again. And at the same time, the county's got to be aware of any opportunity that's out there that could affect the monies we work with. One of the other things that the county's been doing, over the past four years, we've reduced our workforce by 200. We didn't fill positions as they became vacant, unless they were related to critical services. And we held each position, if we could, for a period of 30 days to enjoy, if you will, a little salary sweep uh, for the future. We're going to continue to do things like that because that's the right thing to do. So let's talk about some positives. Let's go back to collaboration. We've collaborated with Loretto in the Syracuse area to establish a long-term care facility for this region. That process has been slow, sometimes painful. It's not over with yet. We continue to wrestle with the Department of Health folks Cuba County has not stepped away from this partnership. Uh, we're right there with these folks when we talk to our state electeds and the Department of Health, and we reach out to the governor's office and have a conversation uh, almost on a regular basis now. We have Cuban ingredients, and now we're going to have a new company that's going to be coming in to join with them that's going to enhance the number of employees and, and add to the dollars that are invested in this community. We have downtown revitalization. We've got businesses expanding. We've got new businesses introduced, new jobs. Our nonprofits are working hard to keep our community services running. We know some jobs have left. That occurs everywhere. We're not unique. We now have schools who are offering new courses related to workforce development. Our agriculture community continues to expand. We are working with the city of Auburn to combine our motor pools. We've been selling gas to the city of Auburn for quite some time now, and, and this, for me, is a great step forward to more collaboration because I think this is going to be a great success story, and then it's an easier sell, if you will, both to the community and to the employees that are affected. But these pockets of prosperity, they need to become a wave that covers the entire county. That's what's going to make us a better place. 
We have a lot of people, our neighbors we know, that travel outside of Cuga County to go to work, but they live here. Because it's the best place to raise a family. Because of the great schools. We are the 18th healthiest county in the state. Thank you to all the healthcare people. <laughs> Along with all the pluses, we've now going to enter this phase again where we have the regional economic development competition, if you will. You've heard the governor and a lot of other folks uh, talking about all the, uh, the billions of dollars, if you will, that, that is out there. So we're going to be competing for dollars related to projects in this region. The pot's larger now and it's more diverse. We're going to need to explore untouched areas from our past attempts. And one of those, just for example, is workforce development. So we're going to have to key in on that. I think most importantly, uh, all these things that have been mentioned take people. People who cannot fear to ask questions, who cannot fear to consider alternative options, and stray from that well-worn path into a new arena. I know we have such people here in our community by what's happening, working in our departments at every level. The government is somewhat slow, and hopefully we can change that. We can become more nimble. We can become more adaptable. This is up to you and me here in this community. We must be, continue with encouragement for ideas and keep that discussion going on. I think all we need to do is look around. We've got a lot of success. It's been happening right here in front of us. It's going to continue. But we do need to join together for our future and for all those that follow us. We need to stay together. Thank you. One of the items we didn't discuss was uh, if there would be a challenge from the city to the county or the county to the city. And you know, last year I said we should go over to uh, the Double Days Field and play some wiffle ball. I guess I'm, I'm going to stick with that baseball unless the city has some other option for us. Okay, here we go. And now I want to uh, turn the podium over to our county administrator, Suzanne Sinclair. Suzanne, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, getting together your presentation today. And uh, we look forward to uh, some of the ideas that you've brought to us coming to fruition. So if you would, please. Well, good afternoon. Um, someone promised me a clicker for the, uh, aha. So I'm very pleased to be here once again, um, talking to you. Uh, last year I came and I talked, um, primarily about our budget, and so I will pass along what was given to me once, um, as good advice for public speaking. He said, always follow the three B's. Be prepared. Be brief and be seated. So I know that everyone's had lunch and, and you're all hey, listening to some very exciting talks. I talked last year about um, the budget and the fund balance primarily. And I certainly agree with the city manager's remarks about the relationship between state government and local <coughs> government. You know, the state government continues to have wonderful programs. I listened to um, NPR on my way home one evening and listened to someone who was being interviewed about the Raise the Age initiative from the state, you know, to raise the age from 16 to 18 for an adult, and that the state was prepared to pay for all of those costs that would be associated with that. And, you know, sadly my experience and my observation in New York so far has been that the state does pay for things at, at the beginning, but then they start tapering on. And that's when it starts to be a, a burden to the counties. It's not that the programs are necessarily bad, but it's hard to pay for those programs when you are dealing with a regressive tax like property tax. So that's who I am. 
Um, this is, I, I actually put this up on the screen last year because I was concerned about the situation where Cuba County was relying on their fund balance. And the, the number that's in red there, the $3,048,454, is how much of the fund balance was used to balance the, the, the 2014 um, budget. And, you know, we had the money, and so that was great. Um, and we, we went forward, and it was, in fact, less than the year before, because we, we recognized, uh, myself and, and the budget director, when I know it, um, recognized that we needed to do something about this. The uh, fund balance is a resource for emergencies, and it also provides working capital through the year, so that we're not having to borrow term for unnecessarily for operating expenses. So this is part of the graph that we looked at last year, and I'll go through these pretty quickly. The entire bar represents the ending fund balance of the year indicator. And it, the part, light green portion is the part that was being allocated for the year following that. The blue bar represents the policy level that the, the legislature had determined was necessary to, to maintain a good solid line of reserve. And when you're using $3 million of fund balance each year, it wears down pretty quickly. And it would have ended up, you know, going into 2017, going into 2017, that we would have um, been short by, the, you know, we would have been down in a $5 million range, which is not sufficient. I put this up last year, too. This was my, my goal for Cuba County. The current expenditures are supported by current revenues and cash reserves and fund balance are within the policy range. I also have visions of a, a tax smoothing fund. Our expenditures this year are very similar to last year. We did manage to eliminate um, 11 full-time positions and 9 part-time positions, so we, we reduced the possibility of hiring. Those were with only a couple of exceptions, those were vacant positions at the time they were eliminated, so we did avoid trying to in, impacting our, our employee force. Gone is the nursing home, which would have carried with it about $8.1 million of, of expenditures. Now here, this, these are the total revenues, and it shows the new property levy tax, but the important part I wanted to, to point out was that on the lower left-hand corner where it says fund balance, the fund balance we used to balance the 2015 budget was $372,890. I was, I, I have to really hand it to the legislators this year because there were some very difficult choices that were made. And this is as, as close as I could ever have dreamed of coming to a, a truly balanced budget in such a short time. And, and I really think that, that you should recognize that they did a, a heroic job trying to get that down. That's a reduction of 88%. So I, mean, I think that's pretty impressive. In fact, I, I repeated it because here's what it was last year, and here's what it is this year. So instead of the incredible vanishing fund balance, you have uh, a, ba a county that has stabilized their fund balance. It shows it here as, as slightly below, but we've had some impacts that are things, you know, even if you start with a fully balanced budget, life happens and it's not always, you know, it doesn't play out according to plan. But we had some good things that happened. We had a slight reduction in retirement contribution rate. Am I, am I, can you hear me? Okay, it's cutting in and out of my ear. Um, the retirement contribution rate went down slightly. We received some local government assistance of $700,000 in lieu of some property taxes that, that do not come from, from tax exempt properties. Um, the Medicaid was estimated to be flat, and now it appears that we might have a significant reduction in expenditures that holds true through the year. 
Um, the nursing home fund, um, we think we can pretty much close out, and that has a net effect of uh, moving $2 million into the, the fund balance. So what does that do? That actually brings us to a place where we fall back within the, the policy range and we can look forward to, to trying to keep it there, um, although that will be a challenge. We need to keep things in revenues and expenditures in equilibrium. And the important part of that is that, of course, it keeps your taxes lower, which is our goal. It may not feel like it all the time, but it really is. But I'd like to also tell you about some other things that are going on in, in the county. Um, the city manager pointed out that 22 cents of your tax dollar goes to the county, so what are we spending that on? Well, this is our new <coughs> Viper system in E911. And what you're looking at is the Power Ops reporting screen. It shows what's going on in 911 at any given time. Uh, the calls in progress, any calls waiting, and where the staff is, what station they're at. Um, it's a very, it's much more sophisticated system than we have had previously. Um, and it's very similar to what Onondaga County has, because I did take a trip up there and wanted to see um, what other 911 systems uh, and offices look like. One of the things that I love about working for county government, in fact, is the sheer variety of stuff that, that we get to learn about and work with. This particular one is a, a phone screen. This is a call made by our 911 director, Denise Spengler, from her own phone. And you can see on the right, there's an incoming call, D. Spengler shows. And on the left is the call information. And when you look at the, the, the acronyms up there, the ALI is Automatic Location Information, and that identifies landlines and cell phones. The ANI is the Automatic Number Information, identifies the landlines. And RTX will be used when the county deploys text messaging, which is actually imminent. In the event of a catastrophic failure at one or both of our 911 centers, we can route our calls to neighboring counties, and it'll be virtually invisible to either the caller or the responder. So it's really pretty exciting. Also new with the Viper system is the MapFlex system. This shows almost instantly where a caller is located when they call. So you can see in the large yellow circle shows the location of the caller and the blue section to the left shows the coordinates of the location, which I learned that in 911 lingo you say lat long, which stands for latitude and longitude. But the big yellow circle shows that, you know, true to form, and, and like a good county employee, Denise was in her office when she called. And so you can see it's very similar to Google Earth. I don't know how many of you use Google Earth but they, um, it will help emergency personnel find a place and to, for 911 to direct them there, and they can give instructions such as the caller is in the third house on the left after you cross the bridge, and, and that will be a huge help to, to help keep all our county citizens safe. We help support the drinking water that, that we enjoy right around Auburn and, and the environment. Um, the Wasco Lake is a, is a major source of that drinking water. And in the upper left, you can see the monitoring buoy on the lake, which is washed, red, and maintained by Dr. Hafman, who is in the, the lower picture there. The county contributes more than 22000 annually to support the monitoring. In addition, the county has contributed cumulative in-kind work in securing state funds to protect the Wasco Lake and other county water resources. Uh, we contribute also to the bacteria testing in the lake. Uh, one of our legislators, Mike Didio, participates in a group that focuses on the Alaska Lake Watershed. It's the Alaska Lake Watershed Management Council. Bruce Natale and Eileen O'Connor, who are also on our county staff, um, help to, to support those organizations that monitor not just Alaska Lake, but also Cuba Lake and the Seneca River. Here's what um, Doug was referring to earlier about the city and the county motor pool. This is an aerial shot of the county's um, highway facility on York Street. 
And you know, local governments have been working together for, for years um, in a very informal way, trying to save their taxpayers money and, and collaborate. This is now becoming a more formal process. Here's the, uh, the, the city's public works facility. Uh, those of you who have young children will recognize the McDonald's across there at the, the street at the top of the picture there. And so we did, I had identified the city and the, and the county have been talking for some while about ways that we could work together. We're, we're, we do similar, but uh, slightly different things. And so in the similar areas, there, there seemed like there must be an opportunity for cooperation, collaboration, and, and economies that could be gained. So we identified um, mutually as the motor pool as a place where we could, we could start that work. So our goal was to co-locate our respective fleets of passenger vehicles and light pickup trucks and ultimately to generate efficiencies from having a, a single, pool, single motor pool maintenance facility operation. And there's the same picture. So the proposal right now, um, it's not formally proposed, but it has been kind of laid out to both uh, legislative bodies, is to relocate the county motor pool to the city's facility on Genesee Street. The city and the county staff would operate for a, a year, possibly two, in the shared facility um, not join operations at that point, but we, we view that as a learning opportunity. We're going to learn about how each other works, learn and identify opportunities because they, they, it's always in the details where those economies can, can take place. In year three, it seems like it's an opportune time to, to start joining those operations if, if in fact everybody you know, sees the opportunity to go forward with this. Um, a fleet manager to help standardize the fleet and the parts that go with it for the maintenance. And the design of a construction, a design of a new facility. Um, we have talked about locating that on York Street, but really the location is, is one of those things that will be discussed as the, the project moves forward. We would hope that in year four and year five the construction would take place and the facility would be then ready for occupation by, by both teams. So in fact, we're meeting this afternoon, um, Mr. Selby and myself and the other members of that small committee that are working on that project to, to take a look at, at more data on the cost of revising buildings to make it workable and to, to look at a possible agreement to to function in those first few years. The county also supports economic development, and the legislature made a commitment in the 2015 budget um, to include support for a, a capital projects that would help create uh, opportunities for economic development. Um, occasionally, this, these shots are of evil drive, so occasionally things come up that, you know, it's that extra little bit that will help um, a business come and locate in Cuba County or in the city of Auburn. And then I would just like to mention that we have also, uh, uh, we've developed over the last couple of years at the behest of a group that started before I did, um, before I came here, um, to recognize our employees. It's called the Employee First Program. It began with recognition. The uh, chairman is a big supporter of the program, um, and rightfully so. It's, it's a great opportunity for us to call out those people who have done something exceptional, um, gone above and beyond the call of duty, as it were, to, to serve the public. And, you know, and really that's what government um, workers are about. We are about working for the government. Nobody ever comes into government with the idea that they're going to make a zillion dollars and retire. Um, they're going to come and, and they are participants in their community on a daily basis. And so we've expanded that program. Um, we are looking for ways to save money and often the people who are right there in the trenches know the best ways to do that. So we, are, we have a program we've tried to broadcast that encourage people to make those suggestions. Um, we've also started a forum. So it, it comes to me. So we be judicious about the questions, but um, 
you are welcome to, to contact uh, the county administrator directly if you have a question. And, and just to let you know what's on their mind, the first question I got was, why are there no parking spaces? So I, I fielded that question. Um, I thank you. If anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, to respond to them. Um, but I will call it quits here in the interest of being brief and being seated. So, city and the county for their presentations and we are very fortunate to have a government that works together. I also wanted to once again thank today's sponsor, Tompkins Trust Company, and acknowledge Tompkins Trust and First Niagara as our diamond sponsors. Um, just a couple quick things. Uh, nominations for our Chamber Awards Luncheon are now being taken till April 10th. That includes member businesses, the leadership of the Cuba Award and the Terry Breidenbecker Award. Um, I leave you today with a quote from Audrey Hepburn. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. Have a wonderful afternoon.